Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, I am starting off the day as usual. I need to go and tend to all of the animals, uh, ducks, all the animals, ducks and chickens that we got. And then I need to check on the starts out in the garage, and then we're gonna start building beds. I found a sawmill that advertised on the interwebs for a bundle of like the ends and pieces of logs. Like, you know, when you're coming through and you're like planing the top of the logs, right? And you got that slab slice that's on top that's got the bark on it. They're selling those for a bundle of 2,000 pounds for 25 bucks. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm gonna go and pick up one bundle, see how I like it, see if I like it. And then if there's more than that, or if, if, if I like it and it's something usable for me, then I will go pick up more. And basically my idea with it is to build the borders of my gardens, at least some of them. So if you guys follow Jess from Roots and Retru Refuge, which I'm sure most of you guys do, it's kind of the slabs that she used on her old garden back in Arkansas. It's, it's like, the, like those basically. And so I'm pretty excited about it. They also sell um, sawdust. If I ever have a need for sawdust, I can go pick that up. Um, what are what are some uses that you guys think for sawdust? Would that make a good would that make a good bedding for those hoop houses over there for the chickens and the ducks? I don't know if it's too fine. What's your opinion? I would love your opinion. Okay, so we need to check on all these starts. See what's what. Do you have a few over here? We have a couple of Cracker Jack marigolds, a Tiger melon, or two, two, three, three Tiger melons, a couple of Kiku chrysanthemums, a couple of, a few of the Prescott. Oh all of the Prescott Fond Blanc. Ooh, maybe we'll actually get to taste some of those. It looks so weird, but I was determined to grow it. I've never actually had one come to fruition. Okay, so we got some Dwarf Siberian Kale. I don't like those, but my husband does. Black Tuscan Kale, Nero Toscana, Baby Bok Choy, Ellen Felton Collard. Ooh, we got more of the Island Tanook Cabbage. We got a bunch of new stuff. Holy smokes. Look up here, you guys. Look at this. We got a ton of action up top. That's so exciting. Holy crap. Oh, I'm so excited. So these things are gonna be ready to go on the ground when we have our gardens built. I'm so pumped. Okay, so um, those are probably gonna actually have to be up potted before too terribly long. Uh, all right. I got kittens at my feet and they're so cute. So, I need to start water, I think I'm gonna start bottom watering these. Um, yeah. So <laughs> All right, so I think it, since these things are so well established and there's a ton of germination, I'm gonna go ahead and start bottom watering these. So also this afternoon, I'm really hoping during the cold, during the hot times, I really need to get the beans planted. <laughs> I still haven't planted the beans. <laughs> okay, close that so the kittens don't get in there. Cause a, cause a ruckus. This area right here, up against the house, it's, it, it's kind of, it's very, there's a big slope here and then a flat area. So I'm thinking this whole area here, as well as where the old chicken coop is, coop run area is, this is where I'm gonna have a big part of our garden built. I kind of, I still can't decide, I can't, shoot man. I still can't decide if I'm gonna do it running this way, which is um, east to west, or if I'm gonna run it this way, north to south. And if I run them this, this way, it's just gonna be the entire length. It's just gonna be one giant long bed. I feel like, see, I feel like with the slope here, I don't think it's practical to enter to, I wouldn't, I kind of feel just with the slope here, I feel like it wouldn't be as practical because it's, it's just, you got this big slope. Like, I don't know, I feel like it'd be more accessible if I built it lengthwise here. Could it be, maybe I'll do like a break right um, halfway through and that way I can more easily maneuver 
because like I like the long beds. I had that at my other house. If you guys are new around here, we just moved to Missouri about a month and a half ago. And in my old place, I had huge, really long, like 44 foot long, giant raised Hugo, Hugo culture style raised beds. And they were fantastic. They were phenomenal. I loved those things to pieces. I built them myself. So I haven't decided what materials I'm gonna build it out of. I do have some tin. Like I could, I could probably build a couple of them out of tin. But then what do I do when my tin runs out? <laughs> I need to price tin. Let's price tin. So inflation has definitely caught up with tin roofing. It is $21.98 for a two by eight sheet of, of tin. That's just stupid. I'm sorry, but I paid like $11 for these ones. So we're gonna have to figure something else out. Maybe I'll try like stacking up the, um, maybe I'll try stacking them up. And it is oak wood. They said it's predominantly oak wood. So maybe I'll just try stacking up the wood like I laid out the cardboard realized the camera was facing the completely wrong direction I have no idea why so it's laid out however I was off by about two feet my line was super crooked I don't have the option of digging a stake into the ground or pounding a stake in the ground because my soil is just too rocky nothing will go through it so I figured out I can run a string I can just tie it to these two bottles and set it on either side of the garden bed so I can still at least, and then I can measure, put them exactly where I want and I figure at least that way I can get straight rows. <laughs> at least I can try. <laughs> All right, so battery died. I'm not sure exactly when it did. I think I need to get some new batteries. These things are going pretty quick these days. But anyways, it is starting to get pretty toasty out here. I don't have a place to put y'all in the shade, so I think I'm gonna have to put you guys away and then we will come back and I'll kind of show you what I got done here. Got two more beds built. Here's the original two. Got two more added on. And I only, I only filled up with one wheelbarrow load or one gorilla cart load full in each um, row. And obviously that's not enough. I just wanted to make sure that the wind is kind of kicking up a little bit today, slightly. So I just wanted to make sure that these cardboard weren't gonna go anywhere. So I put enough on there that I think it'll be fine. So this is definitely one of the dumber things I've ever done. And you can see here, it is a lot. So I decided to stop at the bottom of my hill. I'm gonna offload half of it, go up, come back and grab the other half. So hopefully I can save it. It seemed fine. I went super stupid slow on the highways coming here. So hopefully that'll be okay. We got a pretty good chunk out of it. Hopefully. Sorry for the the landscape or the whatever view this is. Vertical. Oh. All right, let's give this a go. Four wheel drive. Low gear. Let's go. So we finally got it. Two loads. It's pretty decent for 25 bucks. I mean, you pay more than that for 25 bucks for firewood. So, and a lot of it is good and usable. Some of it's not. I'd say it's probably like a third of it is completely just good for firewood. Uh, like a third of it is pretty decent can be made something of it and third of it is just good stuff so I'm pretty excited about it and this is definitely usable if I have a trailer I will do this again <laughs> I will not do this on my truck again thankfully my shocks seem to have uh, recovered so yay it's definitely not golden hour but we're getting back to work outside it is my thermostat says, or my thermometer says it is 104, but I don't think it is. Uh, that thing must be broken. <laughs> like, there's no way it's 104. It was 104 earlier, that's for darn sure. But like, I'm fine. So I don't think it's 104. Either that or the humidity really went down. I was just over, sorry for the lighting. I know it sucks, but like, I, I don't have, I don't know what else to, what else to do. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and top dress all of these with just some straight compost, just to hopefully help give it some nutrients and to help it, um, is that gonna be better? Just to help, there we go. 
just to help give it some nutrients, help it to be able to retain some more moisture. We're gonna go ahead and just top dress all of these tomatoes over here. I was over in the other garden just now. I wasn't planning to, but I was checking the squashes and stuff, and I found a freaking bunch of squash bugs on one plant that I had just checked yesterday. And there was, I probably pulled 10 off of it at least, and none on the other ones, go figure. And then I found something that I have, if you guys don't know about it, uh, there's a, it's like a picture it app. There's one for plants and one for insects. So I Googled it and or I, I took the picture of it and it told me it was a Harlequin, Harlequin bug on my cabbages. So I plucked off a bunch of those. I don't know if it's just me, but I always get particularly annoyed when I find insects that are mating on my plants. That irritates me even more than just the insects because I'm like, how dare you? This is my cabbage. Don't you dare mate on it. I'm gonna top dress all these and then hopefully by that time it'll be kind of cool enough. I think it's like almost seven o'clock so it'll be good it'll prob probably be good by then to go ahead and water again. I don't typically water tomatoes every day. I think I'm gonna go ahead and water every day until this heat advisory if it ever goes away. A lot of the locals tell me that this is ab abnormal and it's unusual and I'm like I kind of believed him a month ago, <laughs> but I don't mind it. Like, I really don't mind the heat. The only thing that I can't do in the heat is like do like really heavy labor for a long period of time. I can do it for short times and I can be out in it. I can put it, piddle around, do things like maybe, you know, whatever. It kind of sucks sometimes. I'm going to stop yammering. Let's go ahead and, and let's go fill the wheelbarrow. This area of the garden is done. I'm so excited. So the other parts we'll go ahead and fill up tomorrow. Uh, finish filling up the two, the two, well, really the four beds at the end there. So pretty excited. That kind of doubled our garden space. So it'll be nice. So I'm back. I'm back inside. We got the you saw everything that we did out in the garden there. And what else did I do? Oh, I mixed up a batch of seed starter mix, and we're gonna get the beans going. I didn't have enough. I only had enough for three, uh, three flats that were already mixed. I'm going to do more than three flats of beans. So I needed to get those mixed up. <laughs> so I'm super excited for the progress in the garden and we'll kind of see how all of that ends up going. We're going to probably get it planting ready in the morning. Hopefully. So, but now I figured you might want to come, want to come along with me and see how I am making some dinner because it's, Hopefully gonna be delicious and super easy. I have four zucchinis that are four small zucchinis that are cut up already. I cut these when I got back from the farmer's market. We're gonna be cooking them in some canned ground beef or canned some canned chicken broth that I already can I already opened it. And then we are gonna be cooking it with pork. We have uh, water boiling to put add to the seed starting mix. So basically I'm just gonna make one very Simple veggie stir fry. That's kind of my plan. While I'm waiting, I decided to have some of my yogurt, my raw milk yogurt, and I added this to it. Y'all, it tastes just like a creamsicle. Good. Now it's time to spice it up. All right. So this is just a super random collection of spices. We're gonna go with salt, of course, lots of salt, <clears throat> garlic powder, ginger, cayenne, onion powder, some taco seasoning, and some nutritional yeast, just to give it a nice cheesy flavor. Plenty of that. I'm not gonna drain it, just gonna do it. Mm. 
mix the pork all in. Okay, we just need some more heat. It's got a flavor. I just want a lot more heat. So this almost turned into a bit of a soup and it is delicious. I'm digging it. That is amazing. I'm super excited about this one. You saw how simple that was. I just grabbed a bunch of spices I like, threw them in the pan and adjusted it until it tasted the way that I wanted it. Super easy, super quick, especially when you're canning. That's one of the awesome things about actually preserving your food and canning is that you have it on hand for night, nights like this. It's 8.30 at night. I don't wanna stay up and for an extra 20 minutes and you know, stand here and cook this pork. I'd rather do it all at once. And it's amazing and I love it. I don't actually have to cook it. I just throw it in the pressure canner. It was raw pack. Thank you so much for spending the day with me today. I really enjoyed bringing you guys along and showing you everything that I'm doing in the garden and all the adventures that I'm going on and, and all of the weird things that I do. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Maybe give you some ideas of some things that you guys can do and look around for on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. There's all kinds of stuff out there that you can get. If you guys are new around here, we just relocated to uh, Southern Missouri from Washington State. We're showing you most of the things that we're doing to try and get our homestead set up and just kind of get everything in general working order and building our homestead the way that we want it. I also like to do all kinds of videos on food preservation, canning, freezing, dehydrating, fermenting, as well as videos on how to actually cook with those foods like this video today. So if that sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button right here. This is where all the fun happens. Up here is a video Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're gonna enjoy. This here is my last uh, Missouri vlog. Up here is the Missouri vlog playlist. Make sure you check that one out for all the awesomeness from the time that we started. Thanks for watching.